September 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 54 and 55 from the Old Testament. Shout for joy, O barren one who has not given birth. Give a joyful shout and cry out, You who have not been in labor, for the children of the desolate one are more numerous than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Make your tent larger, stretch your tent curtains farther out. Spare no effort, lengthen your ropes, and pound your stakes deep. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your children will conquer nations and will resettle desolate cities. Don't be afraid, for you will not be put to shame. Don't be intimidated, for you will not be humiliated. You will forget about the shame you experienced in your youth. You will no longer remember the disgrace of your abandonment. For your husband is the one who made you. The Lord who commands armies is his name. He is your protector, the Holy One of Israel. He is called God of the entire earth. Indeed, the Lord will call you back like a wife who has been abandoned and suffers from depression. Like a young wife when she has been rejected, says your God. For a short time I abandon you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In a burst of anger, I rejected you momentarily, but with lasting devotion, I will have compassion on you, says your protector, the Lord. As far as I am concerned, this is like in Noah's time, when I vowed that the waters of Noah's flood would never again cover the earth. In the same way, I have vowed that I will not be angry at you or shout at you. Even if the mountains are removed and the hills displaced, my devotion will not be removed from you. Nor will my covenant of friendship be displaced, says the Lord, the one who has compassion on you. O afflicted one driven away and unconsoled, look, I am about to set your stones in antimony, and I lay your foundation with lapis lazul. I will make your pinnacles out of gems, your gates out of beryl, and your outer wall out of beautiful stones. All your children will be followers of the Lord, and your children will enjoy great prosperity. You will be reestablished when I vindicate you. You will not experience oppression. Indeed, you will not be afraid. You will not be terrified, for nothing frightening will come near you. If anyone dares to challenge you, it will not be my doing. Whoever tries to challenge you will be defeated. Look, I create the craftsman who fans the coals into a fire and forges a weapon. I create the destroyer so he might devastate. No weapon forged to be used against you will succeed. You will refute everyone who tries to accuse you. This is what the Lord will do for his servants. I will vindicate them, says the Lord. Hey, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come. Buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why pay money for something that will not nourish you? Why spend your hard-earned money on something that will not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is nourishing. Enjoy fine food. Pay attention and come to me. Listen so you can live. Then I will make an unconditional covenantal promise to you, just like the reliable covenantal promise I made to David. Look, I made him a witness to nations, a ruler and commander of nations. Look, you will summon nations you did not previously know. Nations that did not previously know you will run to you. Because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he bestows honor on you. Seek the Lord while he makes himself available. Call to him while he is nearby. The wicked need to abandon their lifestyle and sinful people their plans. They should return to the Lord and he will show mercy to them and to their God for he will freely forgive them. Indeed, my plans are not like your plans, and my deeds are not like your deeds. For just as the sky is higher than the earth, so my deeds are superior to your deeds, and my plans superior to your plans. The rain and snow fall from the sky and do not return, but instead water the earth and make it produce and yield crops, and provide seed for the planter and food for those who must eat. In the same way, the promise that I make does not return to me, having accomplished nothing. No, it is realized as I desire, and it is fulfilled as I intend. Indeed, you will go out with joy. You will be led along in peace. The mountains and hills will give a joyful shout before you, and all the trees in the field 
will clap their hands. Evergreens will grow in place of thorn bushes. Firs will grow in place of nettles. They will be a monument to the Lord, a permanent reminder that will remain. God, I thought when um, I saw what we were going to be reading today that this prayer or devotion at the end was going to be about your ways are not our ways, your plans are not our plans, your thinking is higher than our thinking, and that we should understand that you have everything. I, I honestly thought it was all going to be about you have things in control, we don't need to worry about them. But there's a verse right before it that, honestly, all the times I've read Isaiah, I've missed this completely. And yet, of course, you put things on my heart as I read them and um, we get to talk about them. And so it's chapter 55, verse 6. Seek the Lord while he makes himself available. Call to him while he is nearby. And it caught my attention. I started doing some research in some of the commentaries I have and some of the other versions of the Bible. And... Um, it was really interesting The I had, like so many people, had just assumed that you would always be available to us, that until the end of times, that that salvation, that opportunity to have a relationship with you would always be there. And we take it for granted. I have a lot of friends who say, oh, I want to live my life first, then I'll become a Christian, then I'll devote my life to, life to God. Uh, and I did that for a long time too, so I, I understand, not making excuses, but I understand what they're saying. But how fascinating that, of course you can, you are God, at any given time you could remove what is on the table, an opportunity to have a relationship with you, um, with any of us, you could remove that opportunity. And so understanding that not only is our time not defined meaning we don't know if in the next couple minutes or the next couple decades we're going to be alive but what about right now at what point should we be concerned that you will pull that offer off the table of having a relationship with us i doubt most of us even think in those terms that our time is short here on earth we think in those terms but our time with you is short I'm guessing a lot of us don't think about that. So thank you for putting this verse on my heart. Again, like I said, I kind of have always, I've read it, but I kind of must have already always just kind of skipped over it to get to the my ways are higher than your ways part that I'm so familiar with. God, allow us to understand the urgency of your call to us. You chose us. You want a relationship with us. You seek us. Allow us to understand the intention there and while you are nearby, while you are calling us, allow us to acknowledge that and participate in that relationship fully and enjoy the time that you have set aside in our lives to be in a relationship with you. God, I just so appreciate your word and the depth of it and the ever changing opportunities to see new things about my relationship with you in it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.